In this problem, we're looking at the flow of a chemical. We have 200 kilograms per second of a chemical flowing through a pipe, and the flow comes in horizontally, uh, 2 meters per second, and then it swerves upwards through the bend of the pipe and exits vertically at 3 meters per second. And what we're looking for is the net force that's applying on the fluid as it transits through the pipe. To answer this question, we need to work with the momentum balance equation. And the momentum balance equation uh, gives us the force, the net force, like so. If we can solve um, a rather long and torturous equation, which I'm going to write here, the way I like to write this equation is to try to not remember every detail of it, but remember the general structure. And the general structure says that we have a change in time of an integral over the whole volume, like so, over the whole volume. And to this, we add an integral over the whole surface of the control volume. And this is an integral with dA, like so. And the contents of those integral change from equation to equation. And so I'd like to not remember those particularly detail, in particular detail. Uh, I just look them up in the formula sheet every time. And so for net force, we have here rho times vector v, like so. Um, and we have in this in this uh, surface integral here, we have rho v, again, the momentum per unit volume, times this curious and rather annoying term, which is the v relative. So the relative velocity relative to the control surface uh, dot the n the n vector, which is a unit vector, which is always pointing outwards, like so. And this integral here on the, on the right is done over the control surface. It's a surface integral. Now, this integral is very useful. It's very general. You can use it in all kinds of cases. Actually, I don't know of any case where you cannot use this equation in fluid mechanics. But it's overkill for our problem. And the equation we want to use for this particular case, where there's only one inlet and one outlet and the flow is steady, is much simpler. And it's written like so. Um, in this case, where we are, f, we have f net, like so, as a vector. Here's the mass flow, multiplied by v2, the outlet velocity, as a vector, minus v1, the inlet velocity, as a vector, like so. Um, and we could directly use this equation and start solving, but I'd like to show you how to go from the top equation, which is general and true for all cases, down to this equation, which is true for our particular useful case here today, uh, but may not be generally true. And so to do this, let's take a little time uh, to go through this and let's make a little space like so. Let me push this guy down like so. And let's try to get from the top to the bottom of this equation, see what we cross out in this, in this big equation. So the first thing we're going to cross out is this whole first term here. here. This is because this is the change in time of the momentum inside the control volume. The momentum inside the control volume is not zero, for sure, but it's changing time is, because we have at the bottom here, we have um, a flow that is completely steady. The inlet and the outlet do not change at all. The pipe is not expanding, it's not contracting. You take 10 pictures of this flow, you will get 10 times the same picture. And so this whole here, this whole component there, let's write it in light blue, like so, this whole component here, this is equal to zero. Um, so this adds up to vector zero, like so. And then we have this surface integral here. And the surface integral is made over the whole control volume, which in this case would circle around um, the, the pipe down here. So something like this, this would, whoop, this would be my control volume. Let's make a box like so. Yes, this would be my control volume. Um, over this whole area, we do this, uh, this surface integral. Um, and so this comes down, down to just two components, one for inlet and one for outlet. And let's have a look at two things in there. The first thing is this annoying term here, vrel dot n. This is called v orthogonal. And v orthogonal is going to be positive when the flow is outgoing and negative when it's ingoing. These are the conventions we use in fluid mechanics. So let's just write here, positive uh, outgoing, negative in. like so, and we're going to leave the rest intact. So let's now write the rest of this equation here. We have here minus um, the integral incoming here of rho times the velocity vector here times here the absolute value of v orthogonal 
because v orthogonal here is negative, when I put an absolute value here, I have a minus over there, yes? And this is for dA, the integral of dA. This is for the inlet. And for the outlet, I'm going to have exactly the same thing, except it's a plus. And so this writes as the integral out of, again, rho vector v times here v orthogonal and then dA, like so. Okay, so let's try to work this some more. Um, we have the in integral here. When we look at the, the integral that we have, we're integrating with respect to area. But when we look at the inlet of our control volume all the way down here, um, then in there, we have only one velocity vector. Meaning in this simplified problem, all the incoming vectors are all parallel and identical one to the other. Um, the velocity is uniformly distributed at the inlet. This means that when we integrate anything with respect to area at the inlet, they're all going to stay constant with respect to area. So there's really no need for an area for an area integral. And so this here adds up as being minus rho vector v times the absolute value of v orthogonal here, a. And all of those terms are for the inlet. So I add here the indices 1, 1, 1, and 1, like so. This is for the inlet. And for the outlet here, I have the same thing. Rho 2, vector v2, like so. Then the absolute value of v orthogonal, 2. And then a2, like so. And now here we notice that every time we have rho times v orthogonal times a, and again rho v orthogonal, a, and this sums up here every time to, of course, the mass flow. So that we have, I'm sorry, I forgot the minus. Here's the minus. The mass flow multiplied by V1 here, and then um, plus the mass flow multiplied by vector V2, like so. And so this, of course, adds up and sums up. Let me try to reduce now the space. This here. Uh, is equal to the net force mass flow multiplied by the difference between the outlet and the inlet vectors. Okay, so so much for um, the general theory. Now let's try to solve the actual math. Let me take a little space here and move this to the top. And let's try to solve this general equation and to write out what the net force is going to be in this case. Okay. This equation on top is actually three equations. This is because we're in a case where we have three dimensions, x, y, z. So when I write a vector here, it actually means the three components of that vector. And so we could write it like this. We could say this is f net x with f net y with f net z. And these are, these are the three components of the vector f net. And this is equal to m dot m dot is the mass flow, it doesn't have uh, three components. And then a vector, and the vector is this the subtraction of those two vectors, v2 and v1. And this vector has in the x direction, v2x minus v1x. In the y direction, v2y minus v1y. And in the z direction, v2z minus v1z, like so. Okay, so now, to, to be able to figure out what f, f net is here, we want to figure out what the components of the, um, of the two velocities here are. And so to do this, we just fill in the numbers. We have here the mass flow is 200 kilograms per second, 200. And now let's put numbers here. V2x, the x component of the outlet velocity. When we look at the uh, components here, we see that V2 is purely vertical and so V2x will be zero. V1x here would be two meters per second. But pay attention, V2 is going, sorry, V1 is going in this direction, so towards there, yes, while the positive x is going in the other direction, towards there. And so the length V1x is in the negative x direction, and so V1x here is negative. So when I subtract V1x here, I'm going to subtract the value of minus two meters per second. Okay, so V2y, V2y, 
uh, is the y component of v2 and we can see that y component is the direction here that's pointing outwards of the screen so it's going out of the video towards you and nothing is happening in this dimension everything is zero so i can straight away feel zero for both of those components and then v2z will be the component of in z of v2 and so this is three meters per second is going upwards z is positive upwards and so we have here three i could even write plus three like so and then the z component of v1 is zero over here because v1 is purely horizontal has no vertical component like so so this adds up now as being 200 multiplied by plus four that's 800 I'm sorry, 200 multiplied by plus two, so that's 400. In the middle, I have zero, and at the bottom, I have 200 multiplied by three, which is 600, like so. Yeah. And this is F net, and immediately after I put number, I always check the result units. So units of force are newtons. And so let's square this up at the bottom. Uh, squaring is very difficult. I'm new with this tool, so I'm not exactly clean with my straight lines. Okay, um, so this is how you solve with math. Calculating the net force applying uh, to a fluid as it transits along. Now let's try to see what this means and what this looks like with geometry, with just lines, looking at just the, the arrows. To, this, to do this, let me make a little bit more space. Let me shift this up here. Let's have a look at what this F net really is. F net is basically V2 minus V1. And the V2 minus V1 vectors, let me try to draw nice and straight lines. Let me try to put them in blue, like in the um, assignment. We have here V2 as a vector, and we have here V1 as a vector. What is V2 minus V minus V1 as a vector? Well, to answer this, you take V2, like so. Whoop. Let me put a straight line. Again, let me try again. I'm not so good at drawing when I'm going towards the bottom of the page. V2 minus V1. So let's try again with drawing. Okay. So we have V2, like so. Um, this is V2. And you put then V1 at the end of V2. You put actually minus V1 at the end of V2. This is minus V1, like so. And this will make the sum of those two vectors is then, well, let's put it in red here. Let's put it like so. It will be a vector that goes like so. Yes. And this is then V2 minus V1 as a vectors like this. You multiply this V2 minus V1 by the mass flow, m dot, and then you get the net force. So that if we represent now the net force that's applying to the fluid on the bottom here, it will look something like this. You start at an arbitrary point, you go, um, let's have a look at the details again. There's 400 um, in X and 600 in Z. So you go 400 in X and then 600 in Z. And so this would be then something that looks like so. Whoop, I'm sorry. Not very good at drawing yet. I will improve with time, but this is a little difficult for me now. Yes, like so. This would be here the net force that's applying to this fluid here. Um, this is how you see visually what the meaning of the numbers in this, in this result are, 400 and 600. This is the net force that you need to apply to the fluid to make it as it comes from here and it leaves like that, um, to make it change velocity from this to there. Who applies this force? It may be several things. It might be the pipe. It might be a machine inside the pipe. It might be pressure and shear due to the fluid itself. We don't know. Uh, we cannot know with the information that we have here. All we know is that the net force is, I'm sorry, in this direction, like so, as represented down there. Um, lastly, you want to know if you want to know what the net force applied to the fluid, sorry, applied by the fluid to the pipe is, then you take the opposite force. And so the force applied by the fluid onto the pipe would be the opposite, would be something that looks like so. Here, this would be the force of the fluid on the pipe. 
point so would be the opposite so with this this vector here in green would have minus 400 zero and minus 600 newtons of dimensions so there you go this is how you calculate net force with two inlets uh, sorry two in two vectors one an inlet and one an outlet